Greetings internet, my name is Chris and I'm going to show you something really cool today. Uh, first off I'm going to show you a few applications with the thing I'm going to show you. <laughs> uh, you probably already know what it is from the title. Anyway, so uh, here are a few applications for a T flip flop. If I can make this door work, come on. There we go. Oh, and then close it again. See this little machine over here. Um, I have used it twice here in this little compound here I've made. Um, it's sort of reliable uh, and useful. Well, it's actually really useful, but it's also sort of annoying because you have to spin the thing in order to operate it, like so. Um, and and uh, you need to hold down the button for it to work. Otherwise, if you don't hold it down, it'll just go a little bit and then stop. Here's an elevator I just made to get it down again. Uh, this one doesn't have anything to do with the T flip flop. But I just thought it was kind of neat. So it folds out stairs and whatnot. And then closes up. Uh, the reason why it closes up like that is because the motion it makes when it goes down that way uh, usually results in you being flung out if there's nothing holding you back. There you go. Did it first try. So here you can see the mechanism itself. And it's quite simple the way that it works. Um, I didn't come up with this by the way. Uh, I'm gonna leave a link to the guy I found uh, where I found a video on it. Um, but basically what I'm just showing you here is how to do it with multiple inputs. Because it's really basic and it's gonna it's gonna help you out a lot because currently the problem with um, with the game is that uh, let's say I made a little structure here. Let's put a bearing down. So I want I want this thing to turn, and I could just hook it up like this and set this to ninety whatever, and then set it up with a button. Do that over here. Now currently, so you can see now I have a button hooked up to it, but currently you can only hook one button up to one input or one uh, controller. So you can see, even though I'm dragging it over, it doesn't connect. And this is really annoying because, for example, let's say I wanted a button on on uh, both sides of a wall, like like this, so I can open and close without having to use sensors and stuff then then something like that this uh, flip-flop over here is is uh, really useful um, so I'm gonna show you how to make it uh, work and it's quite simple it involves a sensor and then some spinning blocks so let's say we want uh, let's make something different here let's um, let's just make a, a door that, that opens just uh, to simulate it a little bit better. So we'll make a door that opens. I think that is fine. Put a little bearing here. I think this might have to be a little bit higher. I'm gonna do like that. Um, there we go. I'm just building a frame up a little bit so I don't have to use the lift. There we go. Okay, so we want a button on each side so we can open and close this door. Um, and then how we we just have two inputs for this. So uh, first off, let's see we'll, which way. Oh wait, we haven't hooked it up yet. All right, so we'll put it down a controller for the door. Uh, the door is going to swing this way. That is fine. Put it to ninety degrees. If we just hook it up right now, you can see I, I can hold it open, but that's it. Uh, you know what? I'm actually just going to change it a little bit because we won't be able to walk through this door. Gonna put it here. Alright, there we go. Hook that up again, 90 degrees, like so. So I can hold it open like that, but it's still kind of annoying, like if I want to go through, you know, I have to hold the button. So, um... So the, what we're going to do, we're going to hook it up to a T flip flop, which is really simple. First off, let's disconnect it from the button. Um, and then we're going to make, uh, we'll just do it on the wall here. First we put down a bearing, then a block, 
then a bearing on the block, and then this uh, cross shape. Um, geez, stand still. And there we go. Well, an X, I guess. Uh, and then we, let's see, we hook this up to a, oh wait, no, we'll do that in a second. Uh, then in front of, in front of this thing on the side, so, so it's looking at this side here, we put a sensor, make sure it's facing the right way, there we go. And then we, uh, we use two inputs, and these two inputs are going to be what, um, the buttons we'll be using. So for the first uh, rotation, we use one control, and then we use the other for the other one. And then we use the sensor for the door, like so. So you can see right now it's open because there's something in front of it. It doesn't register the wall, which is very important. Otherwise, it wouldn't work. And then we hook up our two controllers to the two buttons. And then for the controllers, we started to 45 and we put it on loop and the reason why we're putting it on loop is because when uh, when you let go of the input for loop loop uh, mechanism in this game it stops instead of uh, reverting to its uh, natural position or its default position so if I hold down this button you see the thing turns and then stops at 45 degrees which means that it will work as an open and close but you can see this is the reason why I have to hold it down because if I just press it once it, it barely moves so you have to hold it down in order to make it work but here you have it that's a uh, multiple input T flip-flop basically and this will help you a lot I'm pretty sure because just the things you're you're doing in the game like if you want to make doors you want to make machines with multiple ways to open it and whatnot for that this little thingy is super compact and super useful so yeah I'm gonna leave a link again to the guy uh, uh, who I found the video on and I just decided to make it a multiple input from it so hopefully this was helpful and thanks for watching